I'm Ryan O'Dowd, and you're listening to Ryan's Audiobooks on the Issues Magazine YouTube channel. Today we're continuing with Section 10.3 of Adam from the Son of Knowledge by Lex Hickson Nur al-Jarahi. We're picking up in Chapter 2, Salat. Call to Prayer The first moment of Salat is the call to prayer. The melodious cry that opens the hearts and souls of Muslims and non-Muslims alike. Why is the call so powerful? Because it is not simply a human phenomenon. Supreme reality is calling us to Salat through the beautiful human voice. This divine call is not merely an announcement, indicating that one of the five periods of prayer has arrived. It's an astonishing invitation to enter the audience chamber of the Sovereign. More amazing still, it is the Sultan of Being who is calling to his beloved souls to pass beyond the outer chamber and to enter mystic communion and union with his essence. We can long to commune with Allah Most High only because Allah longs to commune with us. Salat is the expression of this divine longing. The call to prayer is such an integral part of Salat that even in solitude one does not omit it, unless one has already heard it from a distance. This call from Allah indicates that each invisible wave of Salat emerges from and returns to the Most High, simply flowing through the visible human instrument, blessing humanity and all creation as it passes. The fact that one cannot begin Salat before the precisely prescribed sun time or without the divine call gives further evidence that the prayers of Islam are not to be considered human initiative. Allah is reaching out to us, through us from within, not we to him. The times for beginning Salat are Allah's, not ours. For this reason, to make Salat at the exact moment the particular prayer period arrives allows us to experience its sacramental plenitude. For then we are accepting prayer as a divine decision, not as our personal decision, however well-intentioned. Naturally, Personal prayer is appropriate in almost every moment, in almost every place. But divinely ordained salat is the unshakable basis upon which personal prayer rests, not the other way around. While reflecting on some of the meanings of this primal divine call, heard in one form or another by all the prophets during human history, we should remember that the words of the call to prayer are far more than meaning. By hearing these words, one is penetrated and transformed by their initiatory power and is lifted every time into their atmosphere of spiritual grandeur. Allahu Akbar, four times. Supreme reality is always greater than any conception. Ashadu ana la ilaha ilaha, twice. I witness that there is no reality apart from supreme reality. Ashadu ana Muhammadan Rasulullah, twice. I witness that Muhammad is the authentic messenger of supreme reality. Hayya salat, twice. Come to salat. Haya al falah twice. Come to the highest spiritual realization. Allahu Akbar, twice. Allah is always greater. La ilaha il Allah. Nothing exists apart from Allah. The opening words, Allahu Akbar, signify that Allah, the sole reality, is always greater than any possible human conception or imagination. This astonishing exclamation is repeated four times to create the fullest intensity of insight, and it reappears throughout the graceful moments of Salat to reinforce our awareness of this fundamental fact, divine ineffability. At the second cry, Ashahadu, Ana, La, Ilaha, Illallah, we become witnesses to the indescribable grandeur of divine unity, witnessing that nothing can exist outside this indivisible essential grandeur. There is no other. The affirmation is repeated twice because it does not consist just of verbal meaning, but of healing, purifying, and illuminating divine energy. Ashadu ana la ilaha illallah recurs at the central point of Salat, opening the door to the direct experience of supreme reality. It's not surprising that the condensed form of this affirmation, la ilaha illallah, is most favored by mystics of Islam in both their communal and solitary spiritual practices, called dhikr. The Holy Quran reveals that not just mature human beings and angelic beings, but Allah Most High stands as witness to his own transcendent greatness. The human witnesses in the divine creation are simply participants in the divine witnessing, the divine I Am. 
the third cry, Ashahadu, Ana, Muhammadan, Rasulallah, refers not only to the noble Muhammad, upon him be peace, but to the entire prophetic lineage beginning with the noble Adam, prophets who the Quran confirms have been sent to every spiritual nation throughout history to bear precisely the same message and the same essential divine energy. This entire venerable lineage, which Islam terms Nur Muhammad, the primordial Muhammadian light, is the vehicle chosen by the divine revealer that manifests all the prophets. The third cry of the call to prayer contains initiatory power to lift us into the spiritual presence of this prophetic lineage. We are being called to pray side by side with all divine messengers, enjoying their sweet spiritual companionship. The Holy Quran refers to this experience as entering the highest circle of the most intimate friends of Allah. The fourth cry, Haya as Salat, empties our heads, excuse me, empties our hearts of any limited motivations whatsoever, filling them with the blessed commitment to participate in these infinite praises that come forth spontaneously from the source of the universe and flow through us back to the same source. Responding inwardly to this divine call, we leave behind limited personalities, limiting projects, limited worlds, just as we remove dusty shoes before entering the place of prayer. The fifth cry, Haya el Fala, does not refer to the success or realization of any limited aims. It is the invitation with supreme reality to enter the mystic state of plenitude, where all powers and attainments are rooted. We are now permeated with joyous expectation. The divine gift of Salat is tangibly descending into the mind, the heart, and even every cell of the body. Fala, which literally means success, signifies mystic union, the goal of the spiritual path, the ultimate purpose of human existence. The sixth cry, Allahu Akbar, is the repetition of the first, for what inconceivability of divine essence is the central principle of Islam. The seventh and final cry, La ilaha illallah, is the key with which to enter essence. If one is performing the call to prayer in solitude, one can chant intensely in a low voice or cry out like a rush of wind or a peal of thunder. In modern Islamic cities, the call is transmitted over loudspeakers from the minarets. Whatever the circumstances, Sheikh Muzaffar taught that one's being should open so fully to the divine call, whether reciting or simply listening, that we are one standing on an iron anvil. anvil. It would glow red and melt. This anvil represents conventional self in conventional world. As Allah reveals in the Book of Reality, were the verses of Quran to descend upon a gigantic mountain, instead of into the diamond heart of his beloved prophet, the mountain would instantly be reduced to dust. The call to prayer is divine longing, the very source of the Quran, descending into the diamond vessel of the secret heart of humanity. If the holy fire of this divine longing touched the universe, the universe would be reduced to ashes. Allah Most High directs the call to prayer only to the hearts of his precious human beings. It is the promise that once more the glorious Quran is going to be revealed. Salat is that prophetic revelation. Direction of Prayer To participate in Salat, one faces the prehistoric sacred valley of Mecca, associated with the prophet Abraham. One orients towards the external focus of divine presence on the earthly plane, the Kaaba. The cubic structure first built by the prophet Adam, upon him be peace, swept away and restored several times during prophetic history. Its large blocks of stone are imbued with the fragrance of myrrh, constantly anointed by pilgrims with this precious oil, which the three wise kings brought to honor the infant Jesus, upon him be peace. For more than half the 23 years during which the power of prophethood manifested visibly through Muhammad the elect, the 23 years during which the noble verses of Quran descended into his heart and then flowed through his lips, the direction of prayer remained the holy city of Jerusalem. This indicates how intimately Islam is aligned with its sister traditions, Judaism, and Christianity. After the Muslim community retired by Allah's permission from the capital city of Mecca to the desert oasis of Medina, the change of direction was revealed during the communal salat at the moment of the standing bow. The prophet inclined his blessed head towards Jerusalem the Holy, received revelation, turned while still bowing, and stood up again facing Mecca the ennobled. 
accurate spatial orientation upon this sanctified planet is an essential aspect of the science of Salat. Allah Most High, according to oral tradition, informed his prophet that the entire earth has now become a holy mosque, or majid, meaning a place of prostration. Simply to stand facing Mecca, the Ennoble unveils the existence of this universal, imageless temple, not constructed by human hands. Whether one is at home, at work, in the wilderness, or beside a busy street, one prays with this planetary mosque. Salat is spatial and temporal. The precise periods for prayer which breathe with the seasons as the times of sunrise and sunset change orient the faithful by the movement of the sun. The five daily prayers of Islam are sacramental in the sense that they transform a human body, earth, and cosmos into vehicles for divine blessing, vessels for divine energy. Salat can never be regarded as merely internal or individual prayer. It is divine action flowing through humanity as a whole in conscious concert with all creation, carefully oriented in planetary space and solar time. The direction of prayer, or Qibla, is not ultimately a direction within the universe, but the directionless direction of divine transcendence. In the planetary circles of prayer about the noble Kaaba, some persons are facing east, others are facing west, some north, others south. The Quran states that truth is not found in the east or in the west, but that wherever one faces, there is the radiant countenance of Allah. Therefore, simply to stand for Salat, spiritually awakened by the call to prayer, gazing into the mystical dimension of transcendence, is already an exalted state of prayer. If there is any difficulty determining the direction of Mecca from wherever one is, one makes the best judgment possible and prays with the firm spiritual intention of facing Mecca. Oral tradition clarifies that Salat offered with a sincere intention is fully accepted by Allah, even if one mistakenly be facing the opposite direction from Mecca. This further confirms that the Qibla, or direction of prayer, is not just a geographical orientation, but the total opening of one's being to transcendence. Now, one can participate in Salat, standing with human dignity and uprightness, plunged into a state of inward silence, sober expectations and liberations from all limited perceptions and motivations. One faces the sacred city of light while attending spiritually to experience perfect communion with divine light. Nothing can interpose at this moment between the soul of and its precious Lord. Not the Gabon Mecca, nor the wall of the mosque where one is praying, nor the leader of the prayer, nor the lines of the faithful, nor even the physical body or the conditioned mind. The beloved Muhammad reported that not even the radiant angels who surround Salat, attracted by the beautiful Quranic chanting and the pure intention of the hearts, can come between the soul and its Lord. The true Kaaba, according to the mystics of Islam, is the secret heart of humanity. When we pray, we are facing the direction of our own innate perfection, the timeless radiance of our pre-eternal soul. As Allah reveals in his glorious Quran, humanity is the crown of creation. Allah speaks these words through the lips of his culminating prophet in a holy hadith. I who cannot fit into my entire universe can e enter easily and completely into the human heart. Movements of Prayer By the prayers of Islam, our physical body is transformed into the supreme spiritual instrument. These graceful rhythmic movements are not simply to accompany Salat, but they are Salat. The mysterious flow of divine energy through which Allah praises Allah and returns to Allah. The miracle of Salat is this. It is divine power and mercy become visible and tangible whether from the perspective of someone within the blessed lines of prayer, or even for an outside observer who may know nothing about the tradition. Salat is an empirical demonstration of divine presence that manifests five times daily in almost all cultures on the planet today. Salat is therefore a divine gift to humanity as a whole, not just to a particular historical community. Simply by observing the movements of prayer manifesting selflessly through Sheikh Muzaffar Effendi as he performs Salat in his small bookshop near the covered bazaar in Istanbul. Many persons were inspired to renew or intensify their practice of Salat, and some persons even experienced the sudden return of lost faith. This is a spiritual gift called resurrecting dead hearts. Members of other sacred traditions and even open-minded secular persons have always experienced a mysterious attraction to and kinship with the prayers of Islam. Why? Because Salat belongs to all humanity. There are various interpretations for each movement of prayer. 
Oral tradition teaches that each position represents a particular state of consciousness that the Prophet observed among angelic beings during the radiant night of his ascension. But the transformative power of these primal gestures of praise lies in actually performing them, not interpreting them with the limited intellect or even contemplating them in a mystical context. These movements themselves are rich sources of direct wordless intuition and waves of ecstatic inspiration open equally to both the sophisticated and the simple. One sometimes smells the rose fragrance of the prophet as one performs Salat, his unique way of prayer which is mystically led by him and takes place within the eternal prophetic heart. A single moment of such intimacy with Allah's beloved vastly intensifies the prayerful submission of the personal will of the infinite divine will and is incomparably more fruitful than reading excellent scholarly treatises or exalted mystical poetry. To lift both hands beside the head, palms open and facing forward, accompanied by the words of divine transcendence, Allahu Akbar, is the first distinct movement of Salat. The open palms signify the openness of the entire being, including every strand of awareness, every cell of the body, and even every pore of the skin, to the divine radiance and magnificence who does not fit into the universe yet resides within our secret heart. We are not praying to some limited divinity in front of us, but we are praying within one all-encompassing consciousness. In fact, it is supreme reality praying through us and within us. According to some masters of Salat, the first gesture places the entire relative world behind us, including the personality and the will of the one who thinks he or she is performing Salat. The faithful person is now elevated into soul awareness, surrounded entirely by divine light, which is uncreated and undifferentiated. As the Prophet used to supplicate, may divine light be before me, behind me, to right and left, be above and below. May my limbs be filled with divine light. May my skin be filled with divine light. No description or image of this infinite luminosity can be adequate. Even to say, during Salat, we experience an ocean of light without shores is to impose subtle mental limits. An ocean and one who separately observes it are both created entities. Divine light is not created, nor is it an entity, nor is it broken into subject and object. This high mystical knowledge is spiritually encoded in raising the hands and crying, Allahu Akbar. It is not dependent on verbal instruction and therefore does not become a mere intellectual assertion. This is why Salat is the most precious gift, chosen for us by the Prophet Muhammad from the Divine Treasury. The next movement of prayer is the union of both hands below the physical heart. This gesture indicates the concentration of the divine energy of Salat at the center of one's manifest being. The right hand is placed over the left, establishing the affirmation of divine unity over all possible counter-tendencies of conditioned awareness. There follows the chanting of Surha Fatiha, the opening chapter of the glorious Quran, key to Quran and essence to Quran. According to oral tradition, this brief surah, mystically termed the mother of the book, contains the spiritual power of the entire Quran. The cumulative revelation and blessing granted by Allah to 124,000 noble prophets, beginning with Adam, upon him be peace. The Quran is not simply a revelation that originated with the beloved messenger of Allah. The Quran contains the entire history of prophecy, and Salat is the activation of that radiant history in our present experience. At each of the seven verses or spiritual steps of Surah Fatiha, the practitioner of Salat descends in contemplation through the seven levels of consciousness, from mystic union to separate individual awareness. This follows the way along which Holy Quran descended through the seven heavens into the adamantine heart of the messenger. This metaphysical route also corresponds to the path of descent of the Prophet Muhammad from the Garden of Essence to bless this planetary sphere, once at birth and again, when returning from his night journey through the higher planes of being. The mystical practitioner of Salat begins at the seventh station, where divine consciousness alone exists. Experience solely the divine power flowing through the human voice as the first verse, or ayat, of the glorious Quran. Alam dulia rabi la alamin. All praise flows from and returns to Allah, who displays countless worlds. The term ayat also means divine sign or miracle. These seven ayats are miraculous signs manifested by Allah as each practitioner chants the Surah Fatiha silently or aloud at least 34 times a day. On this planet today, there are hundreds of millions of devout practitioners of Salat chanting these seven verses. To seal this invocation of the entire Quran, the affirmation Amin is harmoniously intoned by the congregation or by individuals when praying in solitude. The Amin is a distinct act of prayer, the purely human response, so be it. 
Each person must consciously accept this descent of divine energy that constitutes Solat because the drama of human and divine is a synergy. At this point, the process of prayer reaches a high level of intensity. The precise message and blessing of Allah descends as certain verses from some 6,000 verses of Quran. The selection is limited by the number of ayats known by heart, either by the individual praying in solitude or by the leader of congregational prayer. If the imam is a hafiz, one who knows the entire Quran by memory in a manner as natural and easy as we remember our own name and place of birth, the selection is unlimited. One Havis reports that as he is contemplating the musical arabesques in the final verse of Surah Fatiha, the sound becomes like a bee slowly descending upon a particular Quranic verse as upon a flower of light in the vast Quranic rose garden. The actual ayat is revealed to his mind only at the moment of the Amin. Even if our selection of Quranic verses is extremely limited, we must recognize divine initiative in revealing the ayat at the moment of Amin. We must cultivate the sense that these are Allah's words we are chanting, Arabic sounds that bear divine energy, not human words filled with our own energy. Not only the various levels of meaning, but the very resonance of the Arabic Quran is the divine resonance streaming through the cooperating human instrument. The next movement of prayer is the standing bow, hands resting on the knees. The communication between nerves and muscles by which this deep bow is accomplished should be experienced as coming from divine power. Human intention proceeds from divine permission. As one pauses in the fullness of this bow, immersed by in great reverence for Allah, certain words of praise first used by the beloved prophet are whispered softly with intensity and intimacy as lovers whispers to another. Allah most near manifests is absolutely near to the one who bows in Salat, nearer than the hearts of lovers who experience emotional separation as well as affection, nearer even than we are to ourselves. This exclamation arises from joyful submission of will and will to Allah Most High, rather than expressing any individual supplication which is part of personal devotion, not Salat. Three times the prescribed phrase is repeated. Subhana, Rabbi, La Azim. Glory to the Supreme Teacher, who is sheer magnificence. With the unhurried rhythm characteristic of Salat, divine power again lifts the human instrument to the standing position, the sublime upright being, bearing of the true human being, reflecting the innate goodness and internal dignity of the soul. While resting, one intones a prescribed cry of praise and, and expresses a further affirmation of gratitude when reaching the upright position, using a venerable Arabic phrase that from first came from the lips of the noble Ali. The next movement of prayer, punctuated as the others are by the cry of transcendence, Allahu Akbar, is an expression of total trust and total abandon. One releases any trace of separate individuality and plunges with delicacy and balance into the immeasurable ocean of full prostration. As the forehead makes contact with the earth, whether wooden or marble floor, prayer carpet, or simply bare ground, the soul melts into its original source. Another divinely revealed form of praise is whispered slowly, without any sense of personal initiative or even individual existence. Three times the words repeat themselves without subject or object. Subhana Rabbi La Allah. Glorious is supreme reality. Now, divine power miraculously draws one forth from the ocean of union into a steady seated position, expressing the mystical state of diamond permanence within Allah. The human instrument is kept balanced there like a pendulum in slow motion at the edge of its arc, and then is returned once more into a complete prostration. Only the power of Allah could accomplish these movements because there is no sensation of limited will. There is no ability or desire, only subtle rapture. With the cry of Allahu Akbar, one is lifted miraculously from full prostration to the standing position. It is like the resurrection. One stands without losing the sense of full prostration, the actual experience of submission to Allah, which is Islam. The cyclical process now repeats again, including the Surah Fatiha, the Amin, and the other self-revealing ayats of Quran. But the touch of prostration remains on the forehead, where divine light is now streaming forth. For those whose hearts' eyes are open, as the Messenger of Allah remarked most simply, prayer is divine light. After the second cycle of prostrations, one remains seated on the heels, like a pendulum miraculously suspended at the edge of its arc. This is not a position of rest, but blessed concentration and elevation. In this dimension of diamond clarity within Allah, one greets face to face the Prophet Muhammad. Upon him be peace the Prophet Abraham and the entire prophetic lineage, including the circles of their loyal and fervent companions throughout history. 
but most intimately one faces the beloved one of Allah, greeting him as an Arabic grammatical form suitable only to close proximity. Assalamu alaika, ayuna na nabi. Peace be upon you, O sublime prophet. Alive within Allah, by divine life alone, one now witnesses supreme reality through the infinite I am, no longer through the reflected I am. Even the physical position remains one of witnessing, as the right index figure in the in the big toe on the right foot, both point in the mystical direction of prayer. The prescribed words for greeting the Messenger of Allah, for witnessing divine unity, and for calling divine blessings upon all the noble prophets and all their spiritual families are repeated in Arabic, whether one is praying in Africa, Arabia, Russia, India, China, Indonesia, Europe, or America. The effect of using ancient Arabic is to remove one from the personal associations of native language and to lift one into universal praise, unveiling the soul as a timeless companion of the Messenger of Allah, greeting him intimately in his own Arabic idiom. The masters of Salat consider these Arabic greetings to be a conversation between Allah Most High and his beloved Prophet during his ascension, rather than a personal expression by the one who prays. By participating in the original Arabic form of Salat, precisely as it was revealed to the Prophet of Islam, one is lifted above the play of cultural and intellectual preferences. One is also lifted above the powerful current of one's personal imperatives, biological, social, and even religious. Salat can therefore be said to transcend culture and religion, in the sense that they are mere human institutions, mere collections of inhibitions and obsessions. This is why Salat travels so easily among historical societies, including the Eurocentric culture of the modern world, while continuing to retain its basic form, integrity, and effectiveness. Salat frees the human spirit from self-imposed limits. Manifesting divine power of transformation and elevation, Salat achieves the sanctification of space and time, the opening of the mystic path to everyone without distinction, and the unveiling of true humanity. Allah alone is capable of this miraculous feat, whether in the ancient world or in the modern and postmodern worlds. The original life of prayer, revealed directly to the beloved Muhammad and practiced so carefully by him, has been transmitted through bodies and minds of 14 centuries of Muslim practitioners and is now intertwined with our entire planetary civilization. There exist at least four major schools of Islamic traditions concerning the performance of Salat, each one recognized by the others to be genuine, that is, rooted in the life experience of the Prophet and transmitted through an authentic line of his spiritual successors. The beloved Muhammad, upon him be peace, lived in constant ecstatic communion and union with Allah Most High. He prayed in many different manners. Therefore, one finds healthy and refreshing diversity as well as fundamental agreement among these schools of Islamic jurisprudence. Salat always manifests its unique spirit, which can be recognized instantly in whatever Islamic cultural environment one enters, regardless of variations. The promise of Salat to establish the direct experience of transcendence in the hearts and daily lives of all people, without discrimination on grounds of gender, race, or social status, has remained good throughout 14 centuries of complex Islamic history, filled with the struggles of personal and collective egocentricity. Human institutions and human individuals have failed, never Salat. The divine promise of Salat is good until the end of time. The final gesture of Salat is the word of peace repeated twice. First to the right along the lines of prayer and then to the left. Assalamu alaikum wa ra matula ahi. May the sublime, sublime peace and compassionate blessings of Allah be with you. The peace and mercy that have descended directly from the garden of essence now flow outward. Through this final movement of prayer, to everyone in the vast planetary circles of Salat, to angels who gather to witness and enjoy the miracle of Salat, to every human being on the face of the earth, to subtle beings on other planes of existence, and to every creation of Allah. Salat is the gift of peace and mercy to all consciousness. Through this culminating gesture, Allah transforms the participant in Salat into a perfect instrument of divine peace, consciously immersed in the peace that comes from directly experienced supreme reality. The Arabic word for peace, Salam, indicates the essence of Islam, which is not a religious organization but an organic experience of entering divine peace through the open door of Salat. The responsibility of Muslim men and women, whose daily lives have been thoroughly transformed by the dignity and radiance of these movements of prayer, is to share their wonderful experience of peace with all conscious beings, not verbally, but existentially. The highest meaning and function of religion is to be an open door through which the soul returns consciously into divine essence. Not simply after death, but already during this earthly life. 
which does not exist outside divine life. Authentic religion, therefore, always transcends its limited external forms by means of its own sacramental power, its own openness to limitless reality. However, the organic form of the central sacrament, in this case of Islam, the noble salat, the open door into divine essence, cannot be tampered with or dispensed with, but must be wisely protected and sustained. Islam is to experience divine peace through the daily practice of prayer and prayerful living. This is the base of all religion. Thus, following the Holy Quran, we can speak of the universal Islam that abides the heart of all the noble traditions revealed during human history. In this universal sense, Islam is the very design of the human soul, the secret of fruitful civilization, the inner functioning of creation. Never does the Quran suggest that Islam originated with the beloved Muhammad of Arabia. What is unveiled by the Prophet is Salat, the active principle and transparent expression of the dynamic and essential peace called Islam. Now Salat is complete. The peace of conscious communion with supreme reality is transmitted once more to all creation. While still seated, the practitioner may recite various Quranic passages and may offer personal supplications. These forms vary slightly from one Islamic culture to the next. However, with the final word of peace, the fullness of Salat, the miraculous descent of divine peace and mercy, has once again been accomplished by Allah Most High. Standing and re-entering the multidirectional world of relativity, heart still facing the direction of prayer, one gives a kiss of peace or extends the hand of peace to all those who have shared the blissful communion with divine peace. One is now irradiated by inexpressible peace. Although invisible to ordinary eyes, the light of Islam streams forth from the foreheads of those who have truly prostrated. Having been imbued by the graceful rhythm of the prayers, one never rushes to Salat or rushes away from Salat. The Prophet, upon him be peace, once warned a Muslim to slow down his prostrations because he resembled a chicken pecking more grain than a true human being communing with the source of the universe. One comes forth from the place of prayer to engage fully in life, as the Quran states, to experience the abundance of Allah. Yet one subtly retains the state of mystic union and instinctively anticipates the next opportunity to pass through the mysterious portal of Salat, a precious opportunity that will occur again not in a year, a month, week, or a day, but within a few hours. Times of Prayer All creation is immersed in ecstatic praise of its creator. The five daily prayers of Islam establish conscious connection with this cosmic dimension. The quality of light at each divinely ordained salat invokes a particular state of consciousness and hints at certain spiritual gifts that this period of prayer contains. The times move a minute or two each day as the sun subtly changes its orientation to the earth. Salat is a spiritual astrolabe, a way for the timeless soul to navigate successfully through the temporal cosmos. Those who participate in salat experience the personal and cosmic harmony that flows mercifully from the source of being. We will review the basic Salat, not taking account of various categories of supplemental Salat. We are presenting here merely an atom from the Sun of Knowledge. Dawn Prayer Fahar Two rakats or cycles of prostration prayed aloud. This period for Salat arrives not during pre-dawn or false dawn, but when the first white light extends across the horizon. Certain species of birds know as accurately as astronomers the first moments of Fahir. This blessed period of prayer extends until just before the sun breaks the horizon. The compassionate oral tradition focused by Allah Most High through the mind and heart of his culminating messenger reveals that dawn prayer may be accepted by Allah if offered sincerely when everyone awakens, as long as it is before the time for noon prayer. The spiritual quality of fire is purity of intention as one is newly born into the divine light we call creation. Noon prayer, Zuhur. Four rakats prayed in silence. This powerful period for Salat arrives when the sun reaches its zenith, crowning and sanctifying the intensity of the morning's work in the world. This prayer transmits the sense of Allah's work, sovereign power and divine clarity, as well as unveiling human dignity, rectitude, and plenitude. The mysterious door of the noon Salat remains open until the time for afternoon prayer. It is prayed in silence to intensify inwardness. Afternoon Prayer Four rakats prayed in silence. The essential prayer period of the day opens when the sun's rays slant diagonally, indicating the beginning of its swift descent towards the horizon. 
The quality of light in birdsong changes distinctly. At this point, one is the greatest danger of becoming absorbed in mundane activity of losing one's longing for so lot for constant remembrance of supreme reality. The prophet upon him be peace, therefore proclaim, guard well the middle prayer. The quality of this salat is the refreshing energy of transcendence. It is prayed in silence to intensify inwardness. Sunset prayers. Maghrib. Two rakats aloud and one in silence. The period for sunset prayer is brief, like that of dawn prayer, but without the dispensation to complete it later. Therefore, there is a special concern to perform the salat immediately when Allah Most High opens the door between dimensions with the key of the call to prayer. The call is given after the sun's orb disappears below the horizon, with adjustments made for different configurations of the earth. Like dawn prayer, sunset prayer unveils the light of paradise, an intrinsically radiant landscape where there need be no separate source of light, where there is no appearance of any sun. Ease, sweetness, fragrance, coolness, serenity, and bliss, the characteristics of paradise, are experienced during both dawn and sunset prayers, but especially in Maghrib. Both sets of prayers are chanted aloud for the breeze in paradise through perfumed trees with the sound of Quranic verses. Dawn prayer comes without effort, except for the discipline of arising early, whereas sunset prayer arrives after a long day of mundane efforts and spiritual struggle to maintain inward remembrance of Allah. Maghrib is experienced as a liberation, an immense happiness, a spiritual victory. Thus it replicates more exactly that here the experience of entering paradise. The serenity and completion radiated by the sunset prayer heals the entire heart and mind, just as the twilight coolness refreshes the body after the heat of the day. One's entire being is filled with the youthfulness of paradise consciousness. The noble lines of prayer always gaze towards paradise, but the sunset prayer occurs at the very threshold of this most sublime state of awareness. However, Salat remains firmly planted on the earth. Within the transcendental precincts of paradise, there is no cosmic temporality, no movement of any sun, and hence no Salat. Within paradise consciousness, which can be glimpsed even while living on earth, every action and perception is direct dive commu divine communion. Sheikh Muzaffar Afendi used to remark that the only disappointment for the faithful person upon passing away from this planetary sphere is the necessity to bid farewell to the glorious and beloved Salat. All other loved ones will be encountered again, for the Prophet Muhammad proclaimed, you will be with the ones you love. From the perspective of eternity, we are presented only a flash of temporal temporality within which to enjoy Salat, to participate in its graceful power and heart-melting beauty. It is for this reason that the prayers of Islam are performed by knowers of truth, not as a tiresome obligation or a protection against hellfire, but as a joyous play shared by lovers. Even if persons do not always participate in formal prayers, Salat is still going on in the profundity of their being and in the depth of human being. Humanity has become Salat. This is why Muhammad, upon him be peace, is called the seal of prophecy. There is nothing more of Allah to reveal, nothing more for humanity to realize. We are living together in the fullness of time. The brief period for the sunset prayer, which expands during summer months, extends until the last and most subtle drop of twilight has disappeared into the rich radiant blackness of night. Night prayer. Two rakats aloud and two in silence. This is the Salat of Divine Mystery, which leads beyond the far boundary of paradise into the Garden of Essence, the sublime annihilation of limited existence. Sufi masters call this the black light, symbolized by the black cloth that covers the Kaaba and by the black stone enshrined in silver at the corner of the Kaaba. This imageless, uncharacterizable blackness is beyond divine light, which is an attribute of Allah, not the essence of Allah. Divine essence is impenetrable by human intellect, even when guided and illuminated by revelation. Oh, and this rich, radiant darkness is beyond the reach of mystical experience. Angels and even divine attributes face and reflect essence without entering there. Only the human soul, which is the created expression of divine essence, can abide consciously within the mysterious garden of essence. This journeying into essence was demonstrated and activated for all humankind by the seal of prophecy during the mystical night journey. Into the mystic darkness of the Isha prayer, the original divine mystery, the ray of our separate human awareness disappears. The period for night prayer extends to an hour before first light, leaving the door to supreme, supreme identity wide open all night. The noble prophet, upon him be peace, preferred to make Isha late, without sleeping beforehand, explaining that simply waiting for these unique night prayers is an exalted state of worship. This is the only Salat he would regularly postpone until well after the prayer period arrived, indicating the special power and importance of Isha. 
The person who lives in the dynamic current of these five daily prayers exists in a transfigured temporality. Upon an earth that is like a rich prayer carpet spread out for all humanity, precisely as the Holy Quran describes this blessed planet. Special direction and the sun's movement have become potent reminders of prayer. In fact, they have become part of prayer. Sun time is unveiled as marking the conventional hours for eating, working, sleeping, and waking. The whole earth has actually become a vast sacred mosque, as Allah informs humanity through the oral tradition of his messenger. The entire creation has been revealed as pure consciousness, as pure prayer. Thus concludes section 10.3 of Adam from the Son of Knowledge by Lex Hickson Nur al-Jarahi. Tomorrow, or next time, we will continue with section 10.4, picking up to finish chapter 2, Salat. I will see you then. Alam.